Hello everyone, uh, this is going to be uh, challenging math problem number 9. Uh, we have a radical equation. Uh, we need to solve for x and um, the equation that you see on the right hand side is actually if you go ahead and uh, square both sides and keep doing it, uh, you're going to be getting an 8th degree equation and good luck solving that. So, we're going to be using a different approach here. Um, if you notice that the expression under the radical is actually uh, greater than or equal to square root of 2. So we can safely say that x is greater than or equal to square root of 2 here. And then we also need that this expression here under the radical needs to be non-negative. So we can say that 2 minus the square root of 2 plus x is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, let's see what this gives us. Uh, we're going to add that to the other side. So we'll be getting the square root of 2 plus x is less than or equal to 2. If you square both sides, you're going to be getting this. And finally, you're going to be getting x is less than or equal to 2. And since we already know that x is greater than or equal to root 2, that means x is going to be between root 2 and 2 inclusive. Okay? There isn't anything else, basically, because if x is greater than or equal to root 2, it's definitely going to be positive uh, and then this stuff here 2 plus x if x is greater than or equal to square root of 2 then this quantity is also going to be non-negative okay so we now know that x needs to be between these two numbers so we can safely assume that since x is less than or equal to 2 we can safely say that x can equal something like 2 times cosine of alpha and alpha needs to be in the first quadrant but it's also uh, the 2 cosine alpha value is greater than or equal to 2 meaning that alpha needs to be in the first half of first quadrant so we can write that it's going to be between 0 and pi over 4 okay so we're going to use a trigonometric substitution here let's see what this takes us uh, all right so we're going to go ahead and um, substitute this value here for x and then we're going to be getting something like this the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 plus 2 cosine alpha and then we're going to have a lot of radicals here and what we're going to do here is we're going to use um, the double angle formulas so we can actually go ahead and reduce the cosine alpha. So let's replace cosine alpha. And considering the fact that I have different options here. So I can use 2 cosine squared alpha over 2 minus 1 or 1 minus 2 uh, sine squared alpha over 2. But uh, in order for this to, uh, 2 to cancel out, I'm going to use the cosine version, which is going to be this one. And once I replace that, uh, I'm going to be getting from here, after distributing the 2 over, we should be getting uh, 4 cosine squared alpha over 2 minus 2, and then the 2 is going to cancel out, okay? So I'm going to be getting the square root of that, which can be written as um, 2 cosine alpha over 2, because we know that um, 2 cosine alpha over 2 is going to be positive, since alpha is in the first quadrant, half of that will also be there. So we're going to be getting um, from here uh, 2 cosine alpha over 2. Okay, that's what we get from this expression. And then obviously there's a way to simplify this too by using the double angle again. But this time we're going to be using the sine version because of the minus sine. So I'm going to replace cosine alpha over 2 with 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha over 4. And if you do that trigonometric substitution, then we're going to be getting 2 minus 2 times the quantity. Uh, that would be multiply that by 2. So I can go ahead and write it down like this first and then simplify later. Okay. And this should give me uh, basically under the radical. And then we're going to have another radical with the 2 plus sign. So let's go ahead and simplify this here. So this should give us 2 plus the square root of 
2 minus 2 plus 4 times sine squared alpha over 4. Okay. And then as you can see, the 2 is going to cancel out. That was the goal. And we're going to be getting the square root of 4 sine squared alpha over 4. Again, this is going to be a positive quantity. Its square root is going to be the positive square root. So we can go ahead and write it as 2 sine alpha over 4. Okay. So we've gotten to a point where we can uh, further simplify this, of course, uh, but uh, this time we're not using the double angle for cosine because we ran out of cosine here. We have sine. So how do we handle this? Uh, we can go ahead and take the two out and then we're going to we're going to have the one plus uh, sine alpha over four here inside the parentheses. And of course, we have the radical here. Now, how can I manipulate the one such that this becomes a perfect square? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, separate the square root of 2 here. Or I can actually go ahead and keep it for a while. It doesn't really matter. But I'm going to go ahead and replace the 1 with sine squared alpha over 8. And then uh, instead of sine alpha over 4, I'm going to use double angle formula. 2 times sine alpha over 8 times cosine alpha over 8 plus cosine squared alpha over 8. And as you can see here, we do get a perfect square from here. Uh, this is actually going to equal uh, the sine alpha over 8 plus cosine alpha over 8 squared. Okay, and we just need to square root that. And obviously, sine alpha over 8 plus cosine alpha over 8 is a positive quantity. So it's going to look like the square root of 2 multiplied by sine alpha over 8 plus cosine alpha over 8. Okay, we're almost there. Just hang in. We're almost done. Okay, now we just got to do a little bit of more manipulation here. Uh, and if you remember, guys, at the beginning, we had this uh, substitution where we do use that. Uh, we said that x is equal to 2 cosine alpha. So since we have the right hand side uh, is x, we're, we're eventually going to set this expression uh, equal to 2 times cosine of alpha. Okay, but let's go ahead and put it in a nicer form uh, by using the fact that, okay, is, is it possible to turn it into a sum or difference formula uh, by using, uh, since sine uh, alpha over 8 and cosine alpha over 8 are there, I just need to the sine of uh, and cosine of an other angle but it needs to be the same value, okay? So pi over four is actually perfect for this purpose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and multiply uh, th this guy by root two over two and the same thing for cosine. So basically what I'm doing is inserting an extra root two over two. And of course that means that I have to multiply by the uh, multiplicative inverse of this number, which is 2 over root 2 from outside, so that when we distribute, uh, it's going to be the same thing, right? Okay, so we can kind of simplify outside here, and what is good about this is that I can actually replace this with sine pi over 4, and this can be replaced with cosine pi over 4, and what I have here is uh, cosine alpha over 8 times cosine pi over 4 plus sine alpha over 8 times sine pi over 4. So it reminds us the pattern for cosine alpha minus beta. So in this case, we would be getting 2 times the uh, cosine of, I think I can go ahead and write, the, uh, write it this way, uh, 2 times the cosine of alpha over 8 minus pi over 4. You got to pay attention to the formula because when we have a plus sign then in the formula we need to have a minus sign that because that's how the cosine behaves okay so basically after so many steps of simplifying this whole expression we end up with this uh, simple expression and as you'll remember on the right hand side we are supposed to have x which is equal to 2 times cosine of alpha so this is basically equal to 2 times cosine of alpha which is nice because then we can go ahead and cross out the twos and then it's going to be even nicer. So now we have the equality of two cosines, 
meaning that we can actually go ahead and solve this equation very easily. But a couple of things we need to consider here. Uh, obviously, uh, the cosine, um, we assume at the beginning that alpha is going to be between 0 and pi over 4. Okay, Therefore, um, pi over 8 uh, is going to be um, between 0 and um, pi over, I'm sorry, alpha over 8 is going to be less than or equal to pi over 32, but that's irrelevant. So we can actually go ahead and write two possible solutions here because as you know, if cosine alpha is equal to cosine beta, then either alpha and beta are equal or they are uh, inverse. So what we can do from here is basically set uh, alpha over eight minus alpha over four. Actually, I wanna have the uh, alpha on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna keep the larger term here so that I can just go ahead and write this down. So the first solution is gonna be the set these two equal to each other. And of course, um, they can always differ by a even multiple of pi. So I can write it as 2n pi. And uh, what's gonna happen is that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and subtract this, but that's gonna give me seven pi over eight is equal to negative, negative pi over four plus two n pi. And then if I multiply both sides by eight sevenths, then I'm gonna be getting uh, this quantity multiplied by eight sevenths. And this two n pi multiplied by eight sevenths, which is gonna give me some multiple of pi. But here, notice that we're getting a negative quantity and alpha is not supposed to be negative. So I'm gonna to have to consider uh, the second solution. So this is our first branch and the second branch is basically the opposite of this angle here because as we know, the first and the fourth quadrant, uh, the cosine of two angles are equal if they are inverse. In other words, if they add up to pi. So we can safely say that uh, pi alpha is gonna equal the opposite of this angle plus two and pi. And from here, uh, we can go ahead and add alpha over eight to both sides. That's gonna give us nine alpha over eight is equal to pi over four plus two and pi. And then what we can do is we can go ahead and multiply everything by eight over nine. And that should give us this and then eight over nine multiplied by two and pi. And as you can see here, we can cross cancel. Alpha is gonna equal two pi over nine plus, and this should give us 16 over nine n pi, okay? And as you know, 16 over nine is greater than one, but less than two. Uh, so we're gonna be adding, um, you know, something definitely larger than um, pi over four. So. Now we gotta remember that our alpha was between zero and pi over four inclusive. Therefore, the only angle that satisfies our equation is gonna be two pi over nine, okay? Uh, but we still have to find x, and if you remember, x was equal to two cosine alpha, okay? And the only valid solution is gonna be two pi over nine, so our solution to this equation is gonna be two times cosine two pi over nine. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Feel, uh, please comment and subscribe if you haven't. And see you guys in the next video. Have a good one, bye bye.